Hey you book nerds! Genealogy is a great place for those who really like to dive into books. And today I'm going to show you how you can find books for your genealogy research online. Some of the suggestions are going to be free and others are going to be paid. As I take you on a journey of where you can find books online, I'm also going to give you book type recommendation. So stay tuned to all of the website recommendations and the book type recommendation. And if you happen to be using any of these books or sources in your research, make sure you let me know which ones, which types in the comments below. Now the first is almost everyone's favorite and that is Google, going over to Google Books. And I'm going to show you how you can find books that identify your ancestors by name. And make sure you do Google Books, which will be books.google.com. So I'm gonna type in the name of my ancestor, Robert V. Zemstein. If I leave out the V, I don't necessarily get books about him, but play around with your search results to make sure you get the ones you're looking for. So here is a Physical Review, 1924, Robert V. Zemstein. If you wanna look at the book online, you want it to say read. If it says preview or preview not available, you won't be able to look at it online. So I'm going to click in here and I can start seeing the American Physical Society. It highlights all the V's, the Roberts and the Zemstein. And then I have a Robert V. Zemstein right there together. And then I can go through and see minutes of the Chicago meeting in 1923. So he went to a meeting and I can find out more about that abstracts of different papers. If I type in Effingham Townley, there are a lot of really great books on here. The one I wanted to highlight, The Mystery Salt. Now, if you followed my series on John Townley, The Brick Wall, and I walked you step by step how I came up with the solution to who John Townley's father is, Effingham Townley, which one? I mentioned the Lawrence Townley um, inheritance that I was um, looking at in newspapers. Well, the mystery solved. There is an entire book on the Lawrence Townley, Chase Townley marriage and estate question. Sometimes if you see something in a newspaper, go and try to either look for the people involved or the event involved over on any of the book sites. See what you can find. This is actually a fun read. And unfortunately, we're not related to this line directly in any way. <laughs> the next resource I like to use is the Internet Archive, archive.org. One type of book that I like to look for is county histories. Are you using county histories in your genealogy resource? If you are, put a link down in the comments below. So when you want to look for county histories, type in something similar to the phrase history of and then the location. So down here on the Internet Archive, I have war history of Santa Clara County. Now, I wouldn't have known that that war history was there if I hadn't just put in history of. So now I can look at the participation of individuals from Santa Clara County, California in any type of conflict or engagement. There's multiple copies. This one's from the Library of Congress. I do like these little pop-ups that tells you who the contributing repository is. And this one is from the California Digital Library. That can also give you some other suggestions of different resources to look at. Here, we just picked up another one, California Digital Public Library. Here is the Allen County Public Library. And notice I can come in here and I can look at the book right online. Now, some books are restricted and you have to borrow them. And what that means is with your account, you need to log in to the Internet Archive and then say, I want to borrow this book and then you can borrow it online. So some of them are free and you don't have to sign in, and some of them you have to sign in and you can borrow them. 
The next website is Happy Trust, and the recommendation I have for you of book types to look for is anything with the title First Settlers of. I love these books because it comes from a lot of first families of organizations or just researchers interested in a particular location for genealogy or other historical purposes. When I type in first settlers of here on Happy Trust, I see 277 results. Now, I do want to show you something that's really important. Notice that I have this drop down filter to title. If I don't, if I just have all fields, I'm gonna get really rotten results. Well, maybe not so rotten, but they're not what I'm looking for. So make sure you put title. First Settlers of should be in the title. And now I can get to First Settlers of South Carolina, Female Index to Genealogical Dictionary of the First Settlers of New England, uh, the History of the Pilgrims. I want to find something that says full view. Limited search means I'm not gonna be able to see it online. It will tell me where. Multiple volumes. There might be an online version, but I'm going to go ahead and click on this full view one. And then on Happy Trust, I can actually read the book. Look how old this book is. I'm so glad somebody doesn't throw it away and it took time to digitize it. The Digital Public Library of America is handy for records within the United States. It is based from the Library of Congress, and my recommendation for you is to be looking for laws related to the states your ancestors lived in. Now, when I was researching my family in Pennsylvania, I went to the laws and discovered that women had different inheritance rights in Pennsylvania at the time I was researching than in other states. And when I was talking about this with a fellow colleague, she was like, that, that's not accurate. I'm like, oh, but it is. And I sent her to the statutes for Pennsylvania and she said, wow, that's really fascinating and I didn't know that. So really dive into the laws because you may discover that your ancestors where we're required to do things, we're allowed to do things earlier or differently than in the other states of the United States. So when I type in statutes of and then put in a specific state, I get a number of results. Remember, we want to be able to read it online, so we want anything that has the full item view, view full item. There is statutes of the University of Pennsylvania. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Charters and statutes. Uh, you have to keep looking and what I'm trying to find is anything that has the dates in it that covers the time period I'm researching. So I like this one. It's from Penn State University and I can view the full item. It has a number of clicks to actually get there. But what I'm trying to do is get down to this catalog page. So when I scroll down, I want something that says full view. Here's Penn State University. I'm going to go ahead and click view, and then I'll finally get into the book to see. And notice, I started out on the Digital Public Library of America, and I wound up back on Happy Trust. <laughs> I was confused there for a moment, but uh, that's the beauty of this Digital Public Library of America. Um, very similar to the Internet Archive, it will find any of the views that are available and then take you to the associated website to be able to see it online. You know I'm going to recommend a family search. I am a family search fangirl, and they have a great book collection online. Now, some of their records are in their search form location. Some of their records are in the browse only indexes. And then there are other records of interest over in the books under the record types of interest. In this case, we're going to look at probate records. Whenever you get to a search view within the website, you'll see records, genealogies, catalogs, books, and wikis. So make sure you click on books. Direct links will be in our show notes. Click on books and then type in a search term. And in this case, we're going to do probate. Click search, and now you will have a lot of search results when you stay that broad. So probate records of Norway, registered 
Copenhagen probate records, searching American probate records. So that's a how-to book. This is a probate record from Indiana, Miami County. Early American probate inventories that so you just keep going on and on and on. Uh, what you're looking for is when the blue button says access level public and view full text results. So we're going to click on that and we're going to view. And once I'm signed in, I can actually begin navigating through the book. Now this is the final free one that I know of. If you have any further recommendations, be sure to use the comments section below and then I'll be able to share it with other viewers. So WorldCat is great. Um, my recommendation for you is that you look for ethnic genealogy sources. So Germanic Americans, African Americans, Swedish Americans, or other ethnic groups throughout the world. And notice it is world cat. Not only can we look for ethnicity based resources on world cat, but we can also look for journals and magazines. So here I'm going to look for the Germanic genealogy journal. And I'm going to actually make sure I select books and then search books. There are quite a few search results here. Like the genealogy of the pre-Lutheran Bibles, that's interesting. Journal of Lutheran Ministers, uh, toward a female genealogy trends. And there's some things that look like, oh yeah, that's pretty spot on. Uh, Journal of German American History. Early Settlers of Waterloo Genealogy. So type in something where you are trying to be specific, but also scroll down to see what other options are there. So this is a film by the Genealogical Society of Utah. It's the journal 1907 to 1926. It is the one I was looking for. And notice here, the closest library to my address is um, in Salt Lake. Let me tell you about interlibrary loan. What's great is I can go over to my public library and I can do something called interlibrary loan. Interlibrary loan. I can order that book through interlibrary loan and it can be brought to my local library for pickup. It is usually free unless you bring it back late. Some libraries will have a small fee attached to it. So it's another way to extend your dollars. The interlibrary loan based on recommendations from WorldCat. Now I will have all of the links to these book recommendations as well as the book types to look for in the show notes that are found over on my blog, familyhistoryfanatics.com. Let's dive into some of the paid book sources you may want to investigate. The first one I'm going to show you is from Ancestry.com and the book that I have recommended for you is military books. To access the books that are available on Ancestry.com, click on search, card catalog. Over here on the side you can type in a title if you know which regiment you're looking for. You can also put in keywords for now. I'm going to make sure I don't have any filters checked, uh, but I'm going to type in regiment because I'm looking for a regiment history. And there's actually 87 that have that in the title. I wanted to look at the history of the 7th of New York. And it is searchable, but I can also browse. So I'm going to look at the chapter and now I'm in the book and I can read the book about this history of the 7th. 7th Regiment of New York. Another great resource that I've already talked about in a previous video when we talked about social history is Find My Past. And there you go. Social history is what I want you to look for. So both look for the video that will be in the description box on how to use Find My Past to find that social history, but also go use Find My Past to find the books. For Find My Past, to get to the books, click on Search. Uh, record sets. I'm going to filter to Canada to my location. I'm going to sort by subcategory and then come down here until I see something that says 
social history. So here's social history. All of these are great, but I do remember one about folk tales, folklore. I want to click on that. Um, I'm going to just type in page number two. I will be able to get in to this PDF file and start reading the book. I can't say it enough that I love my heritage for city directory, so let's hop on over to see why. So here on my heritage, the US city directory collection, I'm going to type in Lita Geisler. And now I see all of the city directory results. The one I love the most is between 1953 and 1957, between 1926 and 1939. Let me show you why this is so incredible. Once again, instead of spending hours and hours and hours looking for 1953, 54, 56, 57, 58, and 59, my heritage found all of them, and I can look at the city directory and just click through all of them in one location. It really is pretty cool. If you made it this far into this video, that means that you're enjoying our content. Now there's many ways that you can continue to help us bring you the latest greatest content, and that includes checking out our blog, becoming a channel member, hitting the subscribe button, hitting the like button, leaving a comment, sharing this video with your friends, and more. All of these little contributions helped us continue to make great content to help you enjoy your genealogy journey. Now, there are a number of genealogical societies that have books that you can access online or you can ask a librarian to do a lookup for you. One website that I recommend is American Ancestors that belongs with a New England genealogical society. Um, NEHGS, I always get it mixed up what that stands for, but American Ancestors if you have New England Ancestors in your heritage. So the Digital Library and Archives of the American Ancestors is great because you may be able to find some free resources as well as some paid ones. Um, make sure you log in to have better results, but when I clicked on the History of Ancient Windsor, I'm actually able to see part of this book and there might become a point where I have to pay uh, to see the rest of the book, and that's okay. At least get you kind of started. You can search this collection. You can search within this record. It's a really handy tool. So there you have a number of online resources to use to either look at books online or find where you can order the book through interlibrary loan which is really handy when you need your dollars to stretch or you live in a remote place like Los Alamos where it takes 45 minutes to get to Walmart. <laughs> I hope that you will utilize these sources and tell me of your success stories in the comments section below. If you want to learn more tips and tricks on how to do online genealogy research, be sure to check out this playlist right above. And if you're ready for the latest video from Family History Fanatics, check out this one right here internetarchive.gov. Wait, no. Oh, archive.org. Whoops.